Wonderful review. Let's continue the review of what we've been doing this week. And ready, watch this. I made this slide so things like transform and it's really neat. And I'm like, wow, I'm pretty sec, <laughs> sec tabby this morning. I'm pretty tech savvy this morning. So can someone remind me, on Monday, what fruit of the spirit did we talk about? On Monday, what did we talk about? Gabby. Love and joy, yes. On Tuesday, what fruit of the spirit did we talk about? The dude wearing the anime jacket thingy. I know. Peace and patience. We got love, joy, peace, and patience. <laughs> You're like, I wasn't looking. But now you know. Love, joy, peace, and patience. Who was our main character that we learned about on Monday? Who was our main character that we learned about on Monday? Who do we have? Esther. Saul of Tarsus. What name did he change it to yesterday in our lesson? What do we think, Gideon? Paul, yes. Who was the mentor of Paul that we learned about yesterday? We have yellow stripey shirt. Ooh, who was that? Ooh, Gamaliel, way to remember. That was Paul's mentor in the Jewish law. Now, who was the one of encouragement? That was a nice thought. I didn't even think of that. You're smarter than me this morning. Almost Bartholomew starts with a bar, but doesn't end with a Tholomew. Evelyn. Barnabas. There we go. We have Saul slash Paul and his mentor, his Christian mentor. Now i got to say that from now on. Barnabas, one of encouragement. And then some of our um, supporting roles that we talked about were Stephen, who was the first martyr, and Ananias, who spoke, you are a chosen instrument, Paul. John Mark, in case you don't remember, John Mark was the man who started with Saul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey. And then things were getting scary and he ran off for his life. So it's like, I don't feel bad because I understand, but I'm like, the Lord's going to use him in a special way today. And I can't wait for you to find out. For now, I did some research. Oh, this is our title. We have right and right. Can you say right and right? Right and right. Right thing at the right time. Right thing. It's not just about using the fruit, it's using the right fruit at the right time, and that's what we're going to talk about today. But let's review our verse. I did some research. Parasia. Parasia. And I even got the Greek on the board. Yep, you're welcome. Ready? Let's read our verse together, and when we get to this word, we say parasia. Ready? Set? Here we go. Therefore, let's approach the throne of grace with parasia so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help at the time of our need. Parasia, boldness, is the way Mr. Bergen has been explaining that. Huh, that's interesting. So, one thing that we have trouble with is what does it look like to have confidence when you don't know everything that's going on? And we might look at this and say, hmm, this is a song Today, let's pretend this is the fruit of the Spirit that's in front of me. And I could say, oh man, Lord, this looks, this looks pretty hard. But I might be having a bad day, and I'm like, man, that's a lot of notes, and I'm going to have to tap my foot, and like, oh, this might be kind of hard. So you might wake up one day and say, you know, I know that's what God has given me, but... I don't really want to play the pitches right. The rhythms look fun. I really want to do this part of what God is leading me to do. But I don't want to play the rhythms right. Or the, what is it? Does it say pitches? The pitch is wrong. I put a frowny face because I'm pretty good at emojis. <clears throat> so ready? The rhythm's correct. The pitch is wrong. That's how I'm going to use my fruit today. <clears throat> Okay, is that okay? No. Oh, okay, well, you know, man, it's been a really, really bad day. So, you know, I know that that's what God is asking me to do. God wants me to love these people and to have joy. But, you know, it's a really hard day. So I'm, I know that's what God wants me to do, but <clears throat> you're welcome. <gasps> Thanks, yeah. It's called... Nope, don't say anything. Yep, so... But wait! 
okay, it's, the, the day isn't as bad. It's not that bad of a day. But this time, you know, Lord, I don't want to do everything that you're asking me to do. I'm only going to play the pitches right. You know, I don't need to worry about those rhythms, right? <clears throat> you're welcome. <gasps> Here's an extra note. There we go. Awesome. But, but wait, the Lord wants us to look at what we have in front of us and to play things both with the right pitches and the right rhythms. What fruit of the Spirit is the Lord leading me to? We're going to talk about how to find that. So ready? Let's see if I can play this right for the first time. And it sounds a little bit better, doesn't it? Some people are like, I think I know that song. And I'm like, you might. <laughs> what? It's, not, it's definitely not video game music. I wrote that. No, I didn't. No, ready? That's... <laughs> so ready? Now here's the thing. God put this mission in front of me the whole time. And I was only ever to bless you when I listened to what God put in front of me. I might have had a bad day, but I like quadrants because I teach math. So in this, you know, so that's a visual for those who are like, oh yes. The wrong, the right rhythms, the wrong pitches, the wrong rhythms and the wrong pitches, the wrong rhythms and the right pitches, the right, uh, so forth, you know. I messed up on those emojis, but you know what I mean. So anyway, the Lord does things that we don't understand. He gives us a glimpse, but he has the full score. Isaiah reminds us of this. Don't turn your Bibles here because we're going to be here for a second. Let me read this for you. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As for the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, and making it produce the s and sprout, and providing seed to the sower and the bread to the eater. So one thing that you'll notice, we might have one little line. The clarinets have this little itty bitty part right here and they might think, I'm not really, really important. I don't really need to try, but God has everything planned out. And though the clarinets start, the oboes wait for them to stop and then come in. And then the violins come in and they pass this around. You never know what God is doing in your life to affect other people. So he calls you, much like the Apostle Paul, to be obedient in where you are. It seems big, but we're going to talk about that today in chapel, and I am so excited. Please turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 15, Acts chapter 15, and we're going to go over our fruit of the Spirit, but be ready. As you're turning, let's see if we can start. The girls are going to start, and we're going to do our love. Peace, patience, ready, set, here we go. Love, peace, patience, kindness, self-control. I'm glad you guys are better than me at this because I said the wrong ones. Nice reading, friends. So let's read through our message version together. This time, I, I remember you reading yesterday and you're like, oh, but what happens when we live God's way? He, you sounded like you were reading through the book of Ecclesiastes, which is kind of sad. Try to read with exuberance about life. Hmm, ready? Don't yell. Read it like you believe it. Ready? Here we go. But what happens when we live God's way? We live much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, Serenity. We develop a willingness to stick to things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Thank you. That was so much better. And yet again, I mixed up the words, but you guys were reading well. Thank you. We got two more fruit that we're talking about today. First, we're going to ask, what is it? Kindness and goodness? Kindness is described in our way as the quality of being friendly and generous and considerate, a sense of compassion in the heart. 
Our description for goodness is God is doing things in the lives of people. Basic holiness permeates through things in people. We need to be obedient with our measure or two of music because you never know what's happening in the score. Goodness is focusing on what God is doing in people besides what we might see. And that's what we're going to be focusing on. So, fun question. There is a place called Jerusalem down here. And there was something called the Council of Jerusalem. Can someone raise their hand and tell me where the Council of Jerusalem most likely happened? Wrong answers only. Wrong answers only. Where did the Council of Jerusalem happen? Wrong answers only. Um, Tarsus. Tarsus. Oh, terrible wrong answer. Wrong answer only. Wrong answer only. We got Tyler, I believe. Oh, Tyler. What was that? The United States of America. Excellent wrong answer. Another wrong answer right there in the back shirt with the Goku shirt. Syria, good job. Ready, right answer. Who's now the right answer? Council of Jerusalem. Where did it happen? North Pole. Oh, that's a wrong right answer. Ready, what's the right answer? Ready to happen? Say it. Ready, one, two, three. <laughs> Remember, sometimes I'll tell you to do one thing funny. Sometimes I'll tell you to do something for real. Pay attention. Woo. So, the Council of Jerusalem happened in Jerusalem. What happened was there were these guys who were like, hey, like, I know that you're saved by grace and stuff, but like w when I was growing up, I had to follow all these rules. And like those Gentiles over there, they're not following these rules, so they can't be saved. And then Paul and Barnabas were like, dude, that's not okay at all. And they're like, well, like, prove it. So then Paul and Barnabas, can, can you go? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. So they went all the way to Antioch and went, do, 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 and they went to Jerusalem to meet the apostles. And they met with the apostles and said, guys, we got a problem. And Peter's like, what? And Paul's like, well, like, there's these guys. And Peter's like, dude, I know it. The Gentiles don't have to change their lives to make it so that they can be saved. And Paul's like, dude, you understand? And Peter was like, dude. So they had that conversation. That's the, that's the re um, the reinversion. So this is what they came from. They had that conversation and they said, and this is way better English than me, since this is the case, why are you putting God to the test by placing upon the neck of the disciples a yoke which neither our forefathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ in the same way as they also are. That means they're... You, that. Following rules has never gotten anyone into heaven. It's by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. And that is the only way to get to heaven. And it's beautifully written, but it's a simple message. Hard to live out, but that is the truth. So now, they came back from there and there was a guy named Silas who joined them. Barnabas and Paul came back from Jerusalem. They went back up to Antioch and people were like, what are you going to do next? And Paul and Barnabas were like, we're going to go on another missionary journey. But this time, Paul and Barnabas had a disagreement. Barnabas is like, dude, my nephew, John Mark, you know, I know he left last time, but he should really come with us this time. He, he, I, 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 and then Paul's like, Barnabas, I really don't think that's a good idea. And this is interesting. They disagreed. Barnabas and John Mark went on one missionary journey, and Paul and Silas went on another missionary journey. Silas was a friend of Paul. He was sent from Jerusalem to share the gospel. After that meeting about the rules, Silas was one of the people who told all the churches in the area. He joined Paul on his second missionary journey, and he joined the church of Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. I wrote P and B because the text was too big. So he joined the church with Paul and Barnabas. So, let's look at our map. This is Acts 15, verse 40. But Paul chose Silas and left after being entrusted by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. And he was traveling through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So they started here in Antioch. This is, this is the, like, I don't know how they say it back then, but the larger area is Syria. They went through Cilicia. They were like, hey, mom, hey, dad, because that's where Saul's from. Tarsus is right there. And they went up to Derbe and Lystra and Iconium. Ooh, 
Lystra. Lystra is the place where people were like, Saul, Barnabas, you're gods. Let's sacrifice an ox to you. And they were like, dude, no, please don't do that. And then Paul got stoned to death. And then he came back and he walked around and all that. So if I were Paul, I'd say, I'm not going to Lystra, but I'm not Paul. And he went to Lystra. So hmm, he's a little bit smarter than I am because he was following where God was leading him, even if his heart was saying, no, dude, don't do that. So Paul and Silas went to Lystra. Where do we see kindness and goodness through our second missionary journey? They're hanging out in Lystra. Oh, oh there it is. <clears throat> and they met a man named Timothy. Timothy, who was called or who was spoken well of in Lystra and Iconium. Now, Timothy is another character we're meeting. Timothy was a mentee of Paul. So you had Barnabas up here mentoring Paul for a season. Then you had Paul right here. And then you had Timothy being mentored by Paul. Now, Timothy, his mother was Jewish and his father was Greek. He was well spoken of in Lystra and Iconium, like I said, and he joined Paul in his second missionary journey. Now, I want to tell you a story that's a little off topic, but this spoke to my heart. There was a man named Dr. Samuel Shu. Can you say Dr. Samuel Shu? Dr. Samuel Shu. He had a huge impact in the lives of those who are mentoring me. One story that I heard of him. Dr. Shu would study things. He would learn about composers. He would learn about history. He would learn about language. Not because the Bible said, you need to learn about Rachmaninoff so that you can preach the gospel better. No, no, no. Dr. Samuel Shu learned things so he could have better conversations with some people and share the gospel with him. When we see kindness, or when we express kindness and see goodness in other people, we will do things to bless other people and to have conversations with them that might lead into the gospel. And I'm not saying do crazy stuff so that you can speak to people. Challenge your heart and say, Lord, what can I do to bless other people? And Dr. Samuel Shu has made an impact on my life and I love talking about his life with everyone almost as much as I love talking about Jesus with everyone. So. Looking back at our map, he, we had Sam, or Samuel, we had Paul, Silas, and Timothy making their trip. And then they went to a place called Troas. So they went all the way over here. You see Asia over here, and you see Mysia. They actually, Paul was like, Lord, what should we do? And the Lord said, don't talk to them right now. I want you to go to Troas. So he, instead of going this way, he went all the way up here to Troas, and there was a vision that God sent to him. So, let's read that vision. And a vision appeared to Saul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing and pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately sought to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. And we think, well, like the Lord hasn't appeared to me in a vision. No, but sometimes God gives us passions and joys and things that are of God and beautiful that we say, Lord, how can I use this? to bless other people and maybe, maybe, just maybe, lead them to Christ through conversations. So, looking back at our map, they, did, they were making their way over to Macedonia. So they went from Troas, which is right here, and they went up here to Philippi. And in Philippi, they met a woman named Lydia. And many people are like, oh, my name is Lydia. Yes, Paul met not you, but someone, in, <laughs> someone named Lydia. So, he's, Paul goes over to Philippi with Silas and Timothy and Paul is preaching and this woman named Lydia noticed and he she goes up to Paul and she says I I I don't have I don't have much but do you can do you want to stay with my family in Philippi and we think that's kind of odd but that's the way it worked were there any motels or bed and breakfasts on the missionary journeys yes. no so everyone needed a place to stay right so Lydia we find out was actually a wealthy businesswoman from Asia. 
and she would sell expensive purple or crimson fabrics. We're not sure what color it is because it's all different commentaries said different things. But she gave Paul and the gang a place to stay in Philippi when they were there. So they had a place to stay and one day Paul and Silas were traveling and there was a woman who was actually possessed by a demon which is spooky but there are principalities and powers of darkness at work meaning there are things that we might not be able to see but through Christ we have power and strength over them and this woman who was possessed by a demon was following them and she would say as they're walking back and forth in Philippi, she followed Paul and us and cried out repeatedly saying, these are bondservants of the Most High God who are proclaiming the way of salvation. Now, she continued doing this for many days and Paul was greatly annoyed. And he turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And at that moment, the demon came out of her. Hey, hey, Rian, Rian. Screaming at people is not goodness or kindness. Well, what if he was advocating for people that she was mistreating? What if this, what if that? We need to be so in tune with Christ and the community of believers who will be honest with us that when things that are kind of crazy pop up in our lives, I can say, Hey, Josiah, I had this crazy idea about doing this. You know me, we've had conversations. What do you think about this? Alex, I remember we had a conversation about this. What are ways that you think I should handle myself in this? We need to surround ourselves with people every day in ways that we can to say, is this of God? What do you think? And that's why goodness doesn't always look like saying, Hey, you did really good. Sometimes goodness is standing up for people. Sometimes kindness is being a little bit mean because you want them to be better tomorrow instead of just feeling good today. Now that's hard and it's very deep for a Wednesday morning, but I and your counselors would love to talk to you about these things. If you ever have questions, please ask us. Anyway, anyway, so we have Lydia, we have the girl who was unpossessed by a demon. So you would think, hey, that's a good thing. Nope, people got angry because that woman was actually making money for them. So the chief magistrate or the guy who was in charge was like, hey, you, stop doing that. And then they beat up Paul and Silas and they threw them in prison for doing a good thing, right? They were listening to God and now they're in prison. How is God's goodness in that? So crazy thing. Do you think Paul and Silas were upset that they were in prison? What do you think? What do you think? No. Correct. They were not. They actually started singing hymns. And it was, I just think, Lord, I pray that someday I have faith that can do that. Acts 16, 25 through 26. Oh, Oh, it's right there on the screen. Read it with me. Now, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. Now, it's someone's job to protect that jail, right? Back then, if prisoners escaped, you know what they would do to someone who was in charge? Yes, you're right, Lydia. They would kill them. That's scary. So this guy's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And he pulls out his sword and he is about to kill himself. And Saul go, or Paul goes, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. We're here. We're here. We're all here. And the jailer looks around and he's probably like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And then like, wait, 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 okay. We threw these guys in prison because they talked about Jesus. And he's just like, please, 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 please tell me how I can be saved. Just because you're in prison, just because you're going through a hard time doesn't mean God has something amazing and beautiful for you to experience. I wish I could say everything's going to be perfect every moment, but sometimes we get a measure while God has the score. Oh, I can't tell you that it's going to be easy and that I understand, but stick with it. Oh, it's just, this is what it's about. I love this. Okay, so they were in Philippi. They came around. They actually, so they went to another place. I think they went to Berea. 
and they started getting beat up and people were being mean to Paul and Paul was like, oh guys, I gotta run away. So Paul jumps on a boat and goes to Athens and um, what are his friends' names? Can someone tell me? I forget his names. What are they? Silas and Timothy, thank you for reminding me. Silas and Timothy hung out up there. Paul, and, or Paul came down here and he was in Athens. He hung out there for a little bit. And then he went to Corinth. Can you say Corinth? Corinth. Raise your hand and tell me what book of the Bible sounds like Corinth. What do we got, Micah? Corinthians. Sorry, there's like eight Micahs, I'm sorry. Yes, Corinthians, first and second. Those are actually letters to the church of Corinth. When Paul was there, he met someone named Aquila. Can you say Aquila? Aquila and his wife Priscilla actually had the same job, the same trade that Paul had back at home. Remind me, what trade was that? What trade was that, Ian? Tent making, yes. Priscilla and Aquila were tent makers. So Paul like talked with them and they were like, oh, wait, you do the same thing I do? And Paul had a season of rest. Paul spent time with them and was, they were making tents and then he would go to the, to the synagogue on the weekend, or the Sabbath, and he would talk to the Jews, talk to the Greeks, try to talk to them about Christ. And he did that. And I love that. Even Paul rested because God commands us to. Now, at one point, Timothy and Silas came to him. And it says, And because he was the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked together, for they were tent makers. Just what I said. And Paul was reasoning in the synagogue every Sabbath and trying to persuade the Jews and the Greeks. But when Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began devoting himself completely to the word, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. There is a time of rest and there is a time to get right back on your horse and keep working for where God is leading you. Trust God with the score because sometimes we just have the measure. Now, this is towards the end of our journey. Paul, Silas, and Timothy ministered in Corinth for about a year and a half. They went to Ephesus, and the Ephesians said, Paul, Paul, please, please stay with us. And Paul was like, I can't. God is calling me somewhere else. Paul demonstrates that he doesn't only seek comfort and when people want him around. Paul also doesn't seek persecution and only runs to get beat up. Paul says, Lord... I want to be where you have me. And I pray that that's what we get to experience. We have a couple of closing points. Because after they were in Corinth, and then they went to Ephesus, which is right here, they sailed all the way back here. They were like, hey, apostles, this is what happened. And then they went to Antioch, their home base. Now, how can we apply kindness and goodness? Paul wasn't just waiting all the time. He wasn't just acting joyful all the time. He ran away from people. He tore his clothes in anguish because he was scared and sad and angry. And he also said no to John Mark joining the journey. And you think, that's really complicated. Yes. Yes, it is. These are some things that will help us navigate hard decisions. If the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and patience, why am I anxious, unloving, and frustrated with people? Because God has a time for everything, and He has a community for you, both here at Chehi and other places. So this is how we show kindness and goodness. What is the Lord calling you to do? He is calling us to exercise the fruit, the right fruit at the right time. If you're at a funeral, you probably shouldn't be like, man, today's awesome. I love it. It's like, well, maybe you feel that way, but how can you love the people around you intentionally? It's not that you're not joyful at a funeral. It's that you are praying and saying, Lord, I pray that you give these, this family peace. Lord, I pray that you give them joy and timing. I pray they reminisce and they remember the amazing times they had and that by remembering, they point others to Christ through that. And that's a hard thing to pray. There are many adults in here that have been in situations like that. And we just say, how do you love people in this moment? Thank you. Oh, it's hard. But then being joyful with people when your team loses in Frisbee is also a good thing too. <clears throat> anyway, so when God, er, when is God, oh, when is God calling you 
to do it. It's not just what to do, but when God calls you to do it. Ask God to reveal the needs of others to you so you can be a blessing like I talked about Dr. Shu was. We might have the abilities, but when do you apply them? How are you going to know? I've said this a lot. Surround yourselves with people who care about you and will be honest with you. Because a lot of us can have shallow friendships where we just like being around people because they look really nice or they say nice things to us or they're athletic or they're great musicians. Look for friends and community that will stir you towards love and good deeds. Wow. You guys are so amazing to talk with. I'm going to close this in prayer. And I do ask this. If you ever have questions about anything I talk about, ask me. If you ever have questions about your faith or what we believe here at Chehi, ask us. We're not just a bunch of people standing in front of you yelling. We're people who want to be friends. Josiah and Mark Hughes were both campers. Mark Hughes, the counselor, were both campers. And now they're some of my best friends. Love the people around you and pray that God gives you opportunities. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this awesome camp. I thank you for the joy you give us. I thank you for the hard times. I thank you for those times that we're stressed. I thank you for the times that we have peace. Because all these things are a measure in the score that you have in front of you, Lord. May you be glorified in our efforts. May we bless each other in pursuing you today. In your name we pray. Amen.